Hi, this is uh, story or history number six, and uh, I'm sitting on my back deck. A few minutes ago, it was really nice, and uh, maybe you could see the flag back there. That's the back of our yard. Uh, not too long ago, it was nice and sunshiny, and the clouds have taken over for now. Well, it is the end of February 2017, and so we shouldn't expect too much, although it was uh, about uh, 55 degrees when the sun was out. Pretty cool. So anyway, this one is about your most valued friends. And so I made a list. I'm not going to talk about all of them. I made the list of my friends that I thought of over the years, and then I went ahead and said, hmm, most valued. Okay, so my first friend of any consequence was... Uh, at least that I remember, was in uh, Demarest, New Jersey, when I lived there. And I was in the, it was during the 6th and 7th grades, maybe even into the 8th grade. Anyway, kid's name was Van Vanderbilt. Uh, the reason I put him as my most valued is because uh, he was a kid my age, but I looked up to him. He was one of those natural leader kind of guys, and... He was always thinking and and wanting to do things, and we did a lot of camping out. And uh, he just was like a ringleader. And there were other friends there, uh, but Van was the one that stands out. And actually, uh, I lost contact with him for probably 40 years. And now through Facebook, uh, we've talked uh, and we've also communicated back and forth. I know where he is. He's Massachusetts and Florida. Um, he had his own business. Uh, so I'm not surprised he's done pretty well. I don't know how well, but I know he's done well. Uh, the next one is actually family. Um, my brother-in-law, um, Mike Passarelli. I don't know how he feels for sure, uh, but this question came up. I don't know how he would answer it, but he's a valued friend. He's a hard-working guy. I just love him to death. I mean, we had so many laughs and fun times together. Um, mostly working. I didn't hang out necessarily. When you think of a classical friend where you go shoot pool or do something like that, but I, I consider him my friend, and, and um, I consider him to be one of... A valuable friend because he he really supported me. Uh, we worked together in, in my dad's business, and he was son-in-law, and I was son. And I don't know, I probably got favored treatment. And he was such a hard worker, such an example to the other people. Uh, so he influenced me a lot about uh, how to treat people, uh, how to get how to get work out of people. I don't think I figured that out, but, but he sure did. He knows, he knows how to get people to do things. And, um, he's just a great example to me. I, I sure appreciate him. So he's on my, my friend list of, you know, but he's family. I mean, I could talk about my brother Brent too. He's the same thing. Um, but he's my little brother. So <laughs> he's impressive though. Brent is, uh, he, to watch him, I'd like to be more like Brent. Uh, the next one is uh, uh, memorable is a guy named Larry Stevens. And uh, we joined a church in New Jersey and in 71. And he moved to New Jersey in 1971 from Utah. And they had six children coming to, to New Jersey and in and, and Tenafly, where they lived. They Not everybody has six children kids and these are outstanding kids they're doctors and lawyers now just amazing and we uh, we got to know them and uh, just loved them and Larry and I went what's called home teaching that's where uh, two of the church priesthood leaders go and visit three to five families each month same families and uh, so we had a lot of face time together and when we went hand in hand uh, I was working in construction uh, and would would get horribly dirty during the day to the point where uh, Judy would not clean my clothes in our washing machine because of creosote and dirt and gunk. Anyway, so I was very a dirty job doing. And he, coming from Utah, he was a doctor, he was a head of the kidney transplant unit 
uh, area of St. Luke's Hospital in New York City. I think I got that right. Head of the Kidney Transplant Unit, St. Luke's Hospital. I believe that's right. Anyway, he was a, a doctor and a big muckety-muck. <clears throat> and we went hand-in-hand, hand, the dirty old construction guy and, <coughs> excuse me, the, the uh, pristine uh, doctor. And he taught me tons of stuff about how to be a good person. Just, he's probably 10 years older than me. So at the time I was 28, he was 38. Uh, just, uh, just amazing. <coughs> Excuse me. That's probably allergies. So oh, I just love him to death. He's, we see him now once in a while. Judy and I make a point. They're, they're in Salt Lake. And so we'll go up and have lunch with them on occasion. Not too often. I think three times in, a, in the last year. And, and just an incredible guy. When we were in Arkansas, <coughs> I really met a cool guy. And I served with him in uh, the bishopric. He was the bishop, and I was a counselor to him for a couple of years. And, <coughs> sorry about this cough. Um, it's a kind of thing, again, I don't know. We weren't friends in that we went out and uh, went bowling or anything like that. But I, I don't think I ever had friends like that anyway. I just not that kind of guy. This was a, a church friendship, good friendship. He also was about 10 years older than me, self-made man, wealthy. Uh, in Arkansas, he's driving around a big Mercedes. Uh, in Arkansas, a lot of people work in a chicken factory and uh, not a lot of work there except for that, that nuclear power plant that I was at. His name is Perry Turnbull. Oh, the most... Uh, uh, optimistic guy I ever met just amazing and um, during the time that I knew him in Arkansas which was for seven years uh, his company actually went bankrupt uh, got crosswise with the government he had uh, training programs and they took student loans and something happened in, in that area and ultimately he had to claim bankruptcy and I remember driving with him one time and uh, I said, gosh, that's terrible. you got this great big house and everything's going well and you're going to go bankrupt. He said, no, nah, not a problem, not a problem. I've been there. I know how to get out of it. In other words, he's already, he's already been poor growing up. And he arrived, so to speak. He met the American dream head on and, and, uh, and uh, conquered it. And uh, to go back to being poor, it's okay because he, he knew what it was like and it wasn't that bad. So he was just such a motivator for me. I tried to emulate some of the things that he did because he's just a, such an incredible guy. <clears throat> and I see him on Facebook, but he's in Arkansas and we're in Utah, so not so much. Uh, plus, he's getting up there in his 80s now. Anyway, we just don't get to see him, but uh, he, he's memorable. I'll never forget him. He was so helpful to me. Uh, here in Utah, one one person that uh, I got to be friends with, he's younger. So a couple of them have been older, and he's younger. His name is Daniel Maurer. And we did business together. I, I worked for him for a while. We partnered up for a while. Uh, I did consulting with him. I've known him for 20 years, uh, plus or minus. And he is uh, he's the most enthusiastic guy I've ever seen. He can have a party all by himself. He says uh, every day is like Friday and every Friday is like Christmas. And uh, he was the life of the party. I walk in the room and you can't ignore him. And um, uh, he looked up to me like as a father figure, kind of. I'm only well, no, let's see. I'm twenty. I'm twenty three years older than him. Yeah. And uh, his father, I met, and his father uh, was about. 15 years older than me uh, his father passed away anyway he looked up to me um, he used to joke I, that I'd been in real estate uh, longer than he'd been alive because some of you may know I was in real estate back in New Jersey uh, with uh, Gary and uh, George Stewart and I was only for a year but he gave me credit for all the years uh, from that time forward and he used to brag about me but <clears throat> he uh, he was uh well, he still is a good friend. I was with him just the other day doing some. I'm retired, but uh, doing a little consulting with him 
answering questions for some properties we've been involved in. Uh, uh, we did uh, business together. He was a what's called a hard money lender, and I borrowed most of my money from him through his sources to buy, uh, f uh, fix, uh, and flip houses. So together we did that, and I probably did, I don't know how many. I might have done 25 houses with him, his, his private money. And then we went in on a couple of properties. Uh, actually, the very first time I did it, we went in on it. Uh, just a little nervous about making that big leap all by myself. And so we went in on the first one, and then I did the rest and just used his money. But later on, I wanted to get him in because by this time I was keeping properties. And in the end, I owned 13 properties, and I wanted him to have that too for his future. So we went in on two properties together, and uh, uh, we're we're separated out of it now. We sold those two. Well, one property we sold, and one I uh, he bought me out of the other one. And so he's still in it, and I'm just down to one property. But that's been fun. Uh, I've had a great time with him. He's um, he used to be 320 pounds. Now he's 175. But uh, when he was 300, we used to go out to eat lunch every every day and good lunch so we didn't go to to mcdonald's or burger king we went to nicer places not totally upscale but sit down lunches and ate too much it was it was great and gregarious as he is uh, it was so much fun to work with him and so he's my friend now he'll always be my friend and he's still on the planet and he's close by so we get to see each other once in a while and the last name that came to mind was uh, Lawrence Clyde. He lives in Midvale. That's where we lived before. That's, uh, oh, 15 miles from here. And Judy and I get together with Lawrence and his wife, Donna, probably on average once a month, but some months more. Just a, just a really fun guy. Now, I'm his friend, but I don't go do fishing with him. And that he's, he's a big fisherman. He went fishing 40 times last year, and he has a nice pontoon boat. Uh, so I'm not that kind of a friend, but we go and we go out and eat and talk and play games like uh, Quirkle and uh, what's that one? I don't know. There's a whole bunch of games. Mexican Train. It's one. Then there's a couple more. They won't know more games than I do. We just played cards with him uh, this last week. I, I don't remember the names. He's he's a connoisseur of games, <clears throat> and so they're our friends now. They're probably four, five years younger than Judy and I, and uh, we we don't live close. We did live down the street from him, but we moved here to West Valley, <clears throat> so we saw him more then when we were close by. But they're fun, and. Uh, we get a lot of laughs with them, and we're happy to have them to, to be friends. And, and he's he's pretty bright, uh, religiously speaking, and so I learn stuff from him. And uh, he's been a great support over the years, and been a, a good, solid friend. And so that's uh, one, two, three, four. That's five. I had a half a dozen more on my list, but those are the ones that are most memorable. And I'll be happy to here when you get to history six what yours are too so thanks have a great day and we'll talk to you next week